Hello, I'm Samantha Shan, an occupational therapist and director with the OT service. Thank you for listening to this short vlog on occupational justice, choice and dignity. As occupational therapists, we believe individuals have occupational rights and that everyone has the right to engage in meaningful occupations that contribute positively to their own health and well-being. Equally as occupational therapists, we understand occupations encompass a diversity of actions that are carried out in a given context, that occupations develop and evolve over a person's lifetime and are unique to each individual, family and community. For example, bathing can be an occupation in itself, such as ensuring a person can get in and out of the bath safely. Or maybe part of another occupation, such as getting ready for school, work, or bed. As a child, bath time might be associated with fun and play, or maybe fear and anxiety, with related overload sensations to water, sounds, and scents. For some, it's part of a self-care activity, a bedtime routine, relaxation, or a mixture of all three. Some may bathe every day. For others, it may be less frequent care of choice, or maybe care of personal, emotional, or cognitive limitations, whilst others view bathing as a luxury. Understanding this complexity is part of our occupational analysis and our clinical reasoning. Our clinical reasoning comes from talking with clients, listening to and respecting their needs and wants, alongside processing the information in relation to professional knowledge and the best available evidence. There are many different forms of clinical reasoning, including interactive reasoning, listening to the client and understanding the feelings they have about themselves and the interventions they're participating in. For example, how do they feel about the bathing options being discussed and offered? How do they feel about the possibility of not being offered a bath in an adaptive bathroom? How do they feel about the choice of equipment on offer? In my opinion, very often interactive reasoning resonates with occupational justice. Occupational justice, as described by Wilcock and Townsend in 2000, is the right of every individual to be able to meet basic needs and to have equal opportunities and life chances to reach towards their potential. This concept's often linked with wider socioeconomic and political situations, such as the daily living circumstances and opportunities for refugees and displaced persons. However, if we take the premise that if society is to be occupationally just, it must enable all people to have the resources to engage in occupations that they need and want to do. And then occupational science and its concepts are relevant and important for all populations and for all occupational therapy interventions, including discussions and considerations about bathing. So let's consider some occupational science perspectives in relation to bathing. The absence of occupational justice is occupational injustice, and this can have many impacts on the person's human rights. Let's take the example of someone unable to enjoy bathing as a meaningful and enriching activity, such as for relaxation. It could be argued that this is an example of occupational alienation, occupational deprivation, and or occupational marginalization. Occupational alienation is when someone is disconnected from a purposeful activity and experiences their limited expression of self or does not receive the support required to engage in a chosen occupation. This can be seen through inadequate bathing adaptations that don't consider the true meaning of the bathing activity for the person and their family. And perhaps bathing then becomes a must do rather than a meaningful activity. For example, if adaptations and equipment allow that person to physically bathe, get in and out of the bath, yet do not provide a conducive emotional environment for the client to enjoy this bath, this then could be viewed as occupational alienation. 
Equally, occupational deprivation, whereby someone is excluded from bathing due to external factors such as the environment and accessible facilities. This may be experienced if there's inadequate or lack of bathroom adaptations. This exclusion from participation in valued occupations due to environmental and or emotional factors may then lead to occupational marginalisation. For example, when bathing is considered in its full context, such as cleanliness to enable social participation, and whereby the absence of an assistive bath and or suitable bathing equipment can be seen as denying a person's access to their community. It is essential, therefore, that as occupational therapists, we always consider the full implications of a person's required and chosen occupations, considering physical, cognitive and emotional aspects. And to ensure occupational justice, we should question funding authorities and processes. So when this comes to bathing, we should question funding that prioritises showering over bathing or vice versa. We should always try to fully understand what bathing means to the person and their family. By continually challenging discrimination, empowering our clients by increasing opportunities and choice, and by considering dignity alongside participation, we do then enable occupational justice. As occupational therapists, we can ensure clients have choice through advocacy and by being knowledgeable and up-to-date with regards to suitable and available equipment and possible adaptations. Please access the Abacus Academy website for more educational materials and product information. And thank you for listening to this vlog. <laughs>